I made the statement a number of times during the offseason that Florida, for me, was one of the wild card teams in college football. I could see it going really well for the Gators coming off that uh, 2020 season, of course. Could see it uh, becoming a bit of an offseason for Dan Mullen and company. When I said down season, I did not predict this. David Waters, Gators Breakdown, joining us after a 40-17 to loss to South Carolina. David, for as bad as it's been, People were basically still saying, okay, talented team. They're going to finish out the year. Look at this schedule. Mm -hmm. This is not going well. Four and four. We'll reevaluate and see what they do when they finish eight and four. Right. 40 to 17 against South Carolina. But let's get to the firings first. Of course, their front and center. Todd Grantham, no longer defensive coordinator. John Hevesy, offensive line dismissed as well. You predicted this for weeks. Others have as well. So not a big shock. Uh, not a big shock at all. This is a move, especially for Todd Grantham, that should have come after the 2020 season. Uh, for you know, if you watch Florida football, you watched that defense last year. Uh, it was it was a sad state of affairs for the for, for the Florida Gator defense. And look, you go back to Grantham and him coming in at Florida and in you know, 2018, built that defense up, uh, rebounding from uh, you know Jim McElwain, Randy Shannon led uh, team there for the Gators. And okay, they. It improved. You know, they did some good things in 2018, and you was hoping they'd use that as a building block to, um, you know, do some bit better things. And 2019 comes along, and there were some good things about that defense too. Uh, but still, you know, couldn't get off the field on third downs. Look, nobody could stop that LSU offense that year. But Florida's performance that year was abysmal uh, against that LSU offense, and then uh, couldn't get Georgia off the field on third down and let a so-so Jake Fromm offense still control uh, that game. So it was like you couldn't get the big game performance from Ty Grantham. And that's what a lot of fans were pointing to in 2020. You know, Florida had a special offense in 2020. The defense could kind of just even maybe even continue 2018, 2019, but get better in those big game performances. Then, OK, you know, you, you expected Florida to compete for a college football playoff spot when the bottom fell out in, in 2020. You couldn't count on the defense at all. Not to help Florida. And that was enough right there for, for most people to go ahead and move on from Todd Grantham. Dan Mullen, for whatever reason, decided to bring him back one more year. You knew it was a – a lot of people knew it was going to be a big risk and didn't know what you are going to get out of Todd Grantham in 2021. And while the defense is marginally better, still nowhere near where it should be. You see the performances versus LSU this year, performances versus South Carolina this past Saturday. Inexcusable for a Florida Gator defense there. Uh, and look, this is a, a move that probably should have happened already. Probably should have happened after LSU this year. Uh, but this was the final straw here uh, in Dan Mullen and University of Florida, making the, the decision to move, move on for Todd Grantham. John Hevesy, a little bit different. Um, really, really long term with Dan Mullen. 20, 21 years uh, coaching with Dan Mullen, dating back to their Bowling Green days with Urban Meyer. Uh, so these guys have been around uh, a lot. This was a move I thought might happen, but nowhere near right now. I thought it might happen after the season, especially because those guys have coached together for, for such a long time. But Florida run game has not been there since the end of the 2018 season on a consistent basis whatsoever. Invisible performances up front in 2019 and 2020. You saw some glimpses at the beginning of this year. But then once teams kind of caught on, once teams got some film of Florida, Florida's injuries piled up there. With those injuries, we've always questioned and criticized recruiting up front for the Gators on the offensive line. With those injuries, you've seen how you know, short-handed Florida is uh, uh, up front. So, Mark, a lot of it up front for the offensive line comes, you know, not a consistent enough performance. You thought going back to this style of offense would really help these guys. It did initially, but now Florida's just kind of falling back to 2019-2020 uh, run style for the Gators, and it's just not working. Florida Fires, uh, Grantham and Hevesy. Dan Mullen will speak with the media Monday at 1. We're recording just prior to that. We will find out more. That's why you got to catch David on Gators Breakdown, the audio on your favorite audio platform right here on YouTube as well. So get the latest there after Dan Mullen makes his comments. Uh, you can probably come up, David, with many better examples than me, but uh, I'm checking in on the South Carolina game on Saturday night as it continues to spiral out of control. And I saw Josh Van make a couple of plays, but one in particular, he's standing alone in the end zone. And and uh, the South Carolina quarterback was running around a little bit, but he wasn't mm -hmm. exactly Russell Wilson going from sideline to sideline. He just, you know, just kind of sprinted out and he was getting chased. And uh, 
the the fans in the front row of the stands were closer to Josh Van yeah. than any Florida defender. He was he was lost. And uh, considering the plays he had made before that, I would think that you would want to cover that guy. Uh, just your thought, this South Carolina game, again, this took everybody by surprise just because, mm-hmm. you know, South Carolina beat Vandy by one point. They need a last second field goal. So they're not exactly, you know, caught up to speed under Shane Beamer. And this was a route. Yeah, it was a route, Mark. And you look at it, everything uh, that Florida should have had an advantage here. Florida should have uh, on the defensive side of the ball. South Carolina could not run the ball whatsoever. Uh, this season, and then pound the ball, run all over Florida. Basically, mirror image of the LSU game a few weeks ago for Florida, a team that couldn't run the ball, but came in against Florida. And look, they used Florida as their get good game, you know, and done some things that they haven't done all season. And that's what South Carolina just did uh, Saturday night. And then the play you mentioned, you know, Florida, I talk about marginally better on defense in, in some areas. You know, the miscommunication and the breakdowns that we saw in the secondary uh, last year in 2020 does went away for the most part. But here we are once again, <laughs> as you said, nobody around. This is And this, throwing to Josh Van, is a third-string quarterback from St. Francis who's lighting up Ty Grantham and, and this defense. So the writing was on the wall, uh, and you, you, you saw it time and time again. At, toward the beginning of Ty Grantham's – coordinator role at Florida, he would at least feast on the inexperienced quarterbacks, the not as talented quarterbacks. Even that went away starting in 2020. That's, you know, you couldn't even count on, it didn't matter who was playing quarterback. Could be a true freshman out there putting yards up on Ty Grantham. Could be now a third string quarterback for South Carolina who comes from FCS St. Francis and rolls right in and no issue. Lights up Ty Grantham's defense, running around, making plays. So, yeah, I mean, it was not easy to see. Saturday night was just – all you had to do was watch that game, and that would have told you the complete story right now where Todd Grantham stood at the University of Florida, and that's why he was fired. David, you had predicted uh, staff changes. Others had as well. We see that those have been implemented. Dan Mullen seems to be safe as long as he wants to stay at Florida. But at 2-5 and uh, in the conference, 4-5 and overall, they win the game against Sanford. You would figure, although we've seen Sanford – uh, pushed Florida State to the brink a few years ago and a few other teams at Mizzou, Florida State. Do you think that there's any scenario that plays out in which Dan Mullen could lose his job? Uh, I do, Mark. And honestly, even after the South Carolina game, I think that. Um, you know, I, I, I assume with Dan Mullen, he would win these last four games in November, and that would keep his job safe. I think, I think everything is on the table. Uh, right now as far as the future of Dan Mullen in, in Florida. And you lose to one of Missouri or FSU, then if I had to say it right now, I think Dan Mullen is back. You lose one of those two games, I I really don't know. I'm really not sure Dan Mullen is back at Florida. You lose one of to Missouri or FSU. You lose both of them. And Look, I think Florida should move on right now, Mark. I mean, I said that on the podcast yesterday. I, I don't think with the, the, the way Dan Mullen's recruited and constructed this roster – I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't see hope in catching up with Alabama, Georgia, Texas A&M, Auburn, Texas, Oklahoma, when they move into the conference as well. I mean, this is not a just 2022 thing. you got to look beyond 2022 and where is this program going to be when the SEC expands in a, in a few years and recruiting gets a little more difficult with those two teams joining in. The conference itself gets a little more difficult. I don't see light at the end of the tunnel right now with the way this roster is constructed the last few years. And now all the questions of coaching changes and and what do coaching changes mean? Dan Mullen needs an immediate fix in 2022. Do a complete staff, does a complete staff overhaul fix that? You know, does, is there patience? How much time is going to be given to Dan Mullen to fix this? Uh, Yeah. But you, and so now I, I, I think, you know, after this year, I think the best path for Florida would be to make wholesale changes. Uh, starting with Dan Mullen and and, and bring in a new staff. Uh, But if that doesn't happen and Dan Mullen makes these sweeping changes underneath him, uh, there will need to be some immediate impacts in 2022 to show some growth, to show some promise, uh, because that promise really isn't there in the roster. It it, it really is not when you compare it to the SEC week in and week out and who you play in week in and week out. That that It's blind faith, hope, and optimism right there. Uh, If you want to sit here and say Dan Mullen's going to compete for championships because – History tells us he's not with this with, with this roster construction uh, from from the last few years. So, um, Mark, and, and part of these coaching changes now after the South Carolina game with 
uh, Hevesy and Grantham, there's some big boosters that were highly ticked off uh, Saturday night in that performance. And I think these moves, that I told you this, would have been made regardless. That performance Saturday night and some pressure sped that up. Those moves were made because people wanted those moves made right now. So we'll see where what, what losses mean, if another loss comes along the way. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of big money, big boosters, Mark, talking behind the scenes, not too happy with the direction of the Florida Gator program right now. So unless I'm reading this wrong, we shouldn't necessarily be totally surprised at what's happened here. Dan Mullen's taken over a program, and he's taken Jim McElwain's players, and he's coached them up, and they performed better under Dan Mullen. Mm-hmm. And so he improved them to 10-3, and 11-2, winning New Year's Six games. And then he gets his roster, and his recruiting drops off. And now he's playing more with his players, and they're not good enough. Right. I mean, we're, we're, all these questions we're asking about Dan Mullen, we shouldn't be asking these in year four. Yeah, you know, when he was hired, 2022 is supposed to be, all right, we're competing with Georgia for SEC championship. Yeah, you were in the SEC championship game last year. Okay, we get that. That doesn't mean you fall off a cliff the next year. That's exactly what's happened here. You're For Dan Mullen and the roster building and the roster part of this, you're supposed to build it up enough to, you know, compete and be competing with doing The game in Jacksonville a couple of weeks ago was supposed to be for all the marbles. I mean, Florida was already out of the race uh, by then. That's not what you expected in year four. And Mark, the biggest thing, recruiting is number one for me. It always has been. I think it needs to be for every program out there. But it's also been the things you've been able to count on from Dan Mullen that you can't no longer count on. Where's the quarterback development for this year? Where's the game management? Where's the clock management? Turnovers, penalties, everything is credible. Those are things you were able to count on. Uh, with them, you can you don't even get those anymore. That's how you end up four and five. Thirteen and eight against the spread last week. You see the numbers for the season, well over sixty percent. Join us on Patreon, five dollars a month. David Waters, Gators Breakdown. Join him, favorite audio platform. You can find him there or right here on YouTube. Gators Breakdown. Have you already compiled a wish list for that head coaching position? Head coach, no, no, no. Uh, I'll, I'll wait for the move to be made. That's kind of a rule I have. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't talk big board until uh, yeah. a move happens. Uh, so, defensive coordinator, yeah. You know, there's a couple of names out there. I think you know Florida uh, should be looking for if Dan Mullen remains head coach, or or if not, who, whoever comes in. You know, some names out there. Uh, Doug Belk, the defensive coordinator at Houston, uh, I think would be a nice fit. Uh, I know Kirby Smart at Georgia tried to get him as a DB coach when he was leaving West Virginia. From the, from the Valdosta area, the South Georgia area. He recruited the state of Florida when he was at West Virginia. Young, up-and-coming defensive coordinator, I think would be a, a, a nice fit for what Florida needs. You know, they need that infusion of recruiters on staff. I think he'd be a nice one. Uh, would Gene Chizik come out of SEC Network and be a defensive coordinator under Dan Mullen? I think that's a name uh, to look out for. He coached at Flo- or played at Florida in the 80s. I had him on Gators Breakdown in the summer. Um, he said it would take the right fit, the right perf- the, the, the right job, the perfect job to come out of uh, retirement there. Florida would be one of those jobs. Florida would be one of those situations. Now, hold on. Florida would be one of those jobs. This situation, I still don't know. You know, in, in 2022, Dan Mullen's coaching for his job. And that's where a lot of this, who, who do you come and get for a defensive coordinator? Now, you come in and turn this thing around, you catapult your career. And, you know, with, with the stature the, the Gator program brings to it. But you're also coming in with a coach that's – he's coaching for his job, a head coach that's coaching for his job. So how long would you be here uh, in, in the first place, Mark? So there's a, you know, a very thin line right now of who wants to come coach up Florida because we know you'll get the notoriety. You come in and turn this thing around, you are you, – you get shot up pretty quick in, in, in the coaching ranks. But that is a big risk to ask somebody to come in and coach under a hot – you know, a, a coach on the hot seat. Great stuff each and every time from David Waters, Gators Breakdown, favorite audio platform, or right here on YouTube. Catch him right there. David, we appreciate you stopping by as always in the big game against Samford. I know you love these, um, <laughs> these, especially in November. Especially in November, yeah, yeah. When, when, you're, when, when the team is four and five, yeah, these are. Uh, All right, these, David, these appreciate it. All right, thanks, Mark. <laughs>